Hi everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about some work I did a few years ago uh, as part of my PhD, looking at some uh, degraded and some novel habitat types in Port Phillip Bay and what this means for um, local fish diversity, among other things. Uh, this work was supported by the Bill Borthwick Students, uh, Student Scholarship, as well as the uh, Holsworth Wildlife Research Endowment and the Paddy Foundation. So Port Phillip Bay being at the base of Melbourne has a lot of kind of urban related stresses like poor water quality, uh, fishing pressure, that kind of thing. Um, and together, a lot of this has driven a big decline in native seaweeds and especially uh, kelp species like Eclinia radiata, which is uh, what you would know as a common brown kelp along the south coast of Australia. And there are parts of Port Phillip Bay where urchins have become so abundant uh, and combined with poor water quality, they've actually led to these urchin barrens where they've grazed down all the kelp and um, there's very little chance for the kelp to come back. We've kind of reached this kind of a stable state in this, um, with this very low diversity, very unproductive habitat. Um, it's quite sad to see. But there's also another player in this game, um, which is the wakame, uh, also known as Asian kelp, um, Andaria panatifida. Um, this one has been in the bay since the 80s, probably. Uh, it came from East Asia on ships or in ballast water. Um, but you can see it provides kind of a habitat structure. There's a bit of a canopy here. It's kind of similar to what the native kelp provides. And so I wondered what kind of role does this, this uh, novel habitat play for local fish species? So I picked a couple of species that are common, relatively easy to catch, um, that use seaweed species, especially kelp. Um, and I thought I'd see how they respond to this new, new kind of kelp habitat. So I started off in the laboratory where um, I had this kind of controlled setup where I could see which, which they would use as shelter when released into the middle of a cross-shaped tank. Um, and it turns out that they're pretty happy with either the native kelp in the middle with the tick or the um, Andaria on the right with the tick. And they were less keen on uh, either bear rock or sargassum, which is another uh, kind of brown alga we have here. So a similar thing happened when I took this out to the bay and I set up some little boulder reefs and I stocked them with either the native or the invasive kelp or some I left uh, left as bare rock. And it seems like the fish, uh, that these juvenile fish that are settling out of the plankton as larvae, um, they seem to be equally happy with both. They There was a slightly more on the native kelp, but not a very big difference and a lot more than on the bare rock. Um, and so I thought I'd have a look whether this seems to be playing out on natural reefs as well. Uh, and I really wanted to know whether uh, the presence of Andaria on urchin barrens increases their value to fish. And it looks like they do, um, based on population density. It looks like these fish are more abundant and there's more species uh, on these degraded reefs if Andaria is there. And the fish that are there, if we compare them to the fish from the native kelp habitats, uh, seem to be doing just fine. They have similar body condition, similar food in the stomach, so they're, they're, they're finding food in these uh, invasive habitats, um, and they're storing up energy in their livers just like they would be in the natural habitat. So it seems to be going pretty well, to be honest. And I think there's some implications of this for, for management. Firstly, um, it's pretty clear that the fish are using this habitat and so to me, removing a standing canopy once it's there is probably not doing any good to the environment. It, it makes sense if you can, if you have a chance to control a new, a new uh, infestation, sure, get rid of it. But otherwise in areas where it's established, it might be better to leave it there. Um, especially because some other studies have found that wakame is more of a passenger of change rather than a driver. It's not really the cause, it's more of a symptom. Um, and so I think we should probably focus more on treating the causes of this degradation that allows Wakame to establish. Um, and in Port Phillip Bay, this is probably poor water quality and um, these super abundant urchins that are grazing down the native kelp. So I think um, Wakame seems to be actually filling a gap in a way that might be quite helpful for local fish populations, um, which is an interesting case. Uh, this work was published in Ecological Applications um, I can also send copies to anyone who would like to read it. Uh, thanks very much.